Deal with it yourself. My parents are obviously more important than you. My husband yelled at me as I stood frozen, holding our daughter in the middle of a fierce storm. Remember this. A surge of intense anger welled up inside me. My name is Grace. I'm 30 years old. I work as a dietitian at a school in Boston. I married my husband, Carter, four years ago. Carter works for a company in Boston as well, and we live in a suburban apartment. We're a dual-income couple without kids yet, so we had a relatively carefree life. Two years into our marriage, Carter came home and spoke to me while I was preparing dinner. Hey Grace, can we talk for a sec? What's up? Dinner will be ready soon. Just wait a little longer. I replied without any concern, but Carter continued. It's something important. Actually, I'm being transferred for work next year. What? That's so sudden. Where to? I asked, surprised. It's my hometown, Chicago. Ch Chicago? That's so far away. Yeah, and since you're a dietitian with a professional license, you can work anywhere, right? You'll come with me, won't you? I was at a bit of a loss for words. Indeed, being a dietitian is thankfully a job that doesn't tie you down to one place. As long as the license doesn't expire, finding a job shouldn't be too hard. But that doesn't mean I can easily leave my current job or adapt to any situation. Yet it seemed like Carter had already received the transfer notice, and without much regard for my circumstances, the discussion moved forward smoothly. I had grown attached to my current workplace and was reluctant to leave, but I also didn't want to live apart from Carter, whom I hadn't been married to for long. With that in mind, I informed my school of my intention to resign and decided to go with Carter. Months went by, and the move to Chicago was approaching the following month. While packing and getting rid of unnecessary items, I asked Carter something that had been bothering me. Hey, Carter, the address over there is already decided, right? Why do you ask about the address? We haven't looked for a house yet, but it's a company transfer, so it's a leased apartment or something, right? Then Carter seemed to suddenly remember something and said, Huh, didn't I tell you, Grace? Tell me what? I asked, a bad feeling suddenly dawning on me. We're going to live with my parents when we get there, Carter revealed abruptly. What? Are you serious? Don't worry, it's a house built for living together, so you can relax, he said nonchalantly. I couldn't believe my ears. How could he not mention something so crucial until now? In disbelief, I asked, What did you just say? A house built for living together? What are you talking about? You can't just spring this on me. I can't live with your parents. Carter looked at me as if I were being troublesome. It's fine, I told you. It's a house built for living together. It even has separate entrances and living spaces, so our privacy is maintained, and we'll have separate lives. I was utterly astounded by Carter's reckless words. It's not just about that. There are so many other things. I stopped, mid-sentence, suddenly concerned. Wait a minute. How did you even get a house like that? With a nonchalant expression, Carter replied, I had it built. What? In my name. This was beyond anything I had expected. His words left me speechless. You had it built in your name? Yeah, I built the house in my name. Without even discussing it with me? I could understand the words Carter was saying, but I couldn't grasp the reality of them. What were you thinking? The mere thought of starting a new life in an unfamiliar place was stressful enough, but living with my in-laws was something I had never even considered. Despite numerous discussions with Carter, there's no way we can change it now. He stubbornly insisted. The house was nearly finished, and the in-laws had already prepared to leave their current home. No matter what I said, the move was inevitable, and the day was fast approaching. Without considering my opinions or grievances, our new life began. Although I had found a job in the new area, and a month had passed since the revelation, nothing could have prepared me for the house built supposedly for us. It seemed designed solely for the in-laws. Located near a river, the setting was picturesque and rich in natural beauty, but the interior was entirely tailored for the in-laws. While the living spaces were indeed separate, with kitchens for each, they were all designed to suit my mother-in-law's height, 
causing me back pain due to their low height. It was evident that Linda had heavily influenced the interior design. I've always been fond of Scandinavian design and had specific ideas for my own house. However, both living spaces were styled to her preference, European style. Even the wallpaper wasn't the simple color I liked, but instead a gaudy floral pattern in the style of William Morris. Why is this wallpaper even in our space? I asked Carter, bewildered. You know, a woman like this kind of fancy stuff, right? Mom really has great taste. Leaving it up to her was the right decision. He said, nodding contentedly. I was stunned. Had Carter ever really seen me during these past years? Clearly not. If he had, he would have never chosen this wallpaper. But the wallpaper issue was just the tip of the iceberg. The most troublesome aspect was dealing with the in-laws. Despite the house being designed for separate living spaces, every mealtime the in-laws would come over to our side. Even if I could somehow tolerate that, their attitude was unbearable. They would eat and then complain about my cooking every day. Grace, this meal is too salty, don't you think? Mark, my father-in-law, would say, and Linda, my mother-in-law, would chime in without missing a beat. Oh, indeed. Are you trying to give us kidney disease? I'm sorry. I'll be more careful next time. I would reply. Then Mark, with a mean smirk, would retort. You always say that, Grace. Next time, next time. But you never improve. We're worried about Carter's health after we're gone. Linda would add insult to injury. Exactly. Aren't you a dietitian? If you can't even manage the nutrition of your closest family, how can you claim to be a professional? Frustration and anger pulsed through my temples. In my mind, shut up, you old fools. Just eat quietly. I cursed. Their comments were baseless. I am a professional dietitian, and I carefully adjust the seasoning of the food to suit their age and health conditions. The meal that Mark called too salty had the same seasoning and amount of spices as the one he previously complained was too bland. It wasn't about the taste at all. They were just harassing me. My heart was constantly filled with irritation and anger. Then one day, Feeling unwell from the stress and fatigue, I went to the hospital and discovered I was pregnant. Overjoyed, I returned home to share the news with Carter and the in-laws, but their reaction was far from joyful. In fact, the in-laws' comments were shocking. So you're pregnant, fine, but you're not quitting your job, they said. Yes, exactly. Being a dietitian isn't a job that would negatively affect your pregnancy. They added, holding back my anger, I countered. But I want to take care of the baby. I was thinking of taking maternity leave a bit early. What are you talking about? You can't just decide that. You need to work, earn money, and contribute to the household. That's your role. They insisted. I had hoped Linda, being a woman, would understand. But that was a futile hope. That's right. There's still a lot left on this house's mortgage. She said coldly. But this house was built by Carter without... I started to say, unable to hold back any longer. What are you talking about? You live here too, don't you? They interrupted. Really, how shameless. You expect Carter to pay for everything? Stop being so entitled. They continued. I was so angry, I couldn't speak. I glanced at Carter, but he seemed indifferent, just watching TV as if nothing was happening. While I was being blamed, Carter said nothing at all. As days passed, the in-laws' behavior only escalated. In defiance, I took early maternity leave for my health and the baby's sake. Predictably, this enraged the in-laws. It even led to me being coerced into signing divorce papers. If you do anything on your own again, these divorce papers will be filed. Linda threatened me, her eyes narrowed in anger. Carter remained silent, even then. And no wonder... Carter's signature was already on the divorce papers. I was forced to sign. It seemed he was okay with the idea of divorcing me. I never imagined facing such treatment, especially after just finding out about our child. Even without being forced, the thought of divorce had begun to cross my mind. Maybe that's better for this child. That thought crossed my mind more than once. Months later, after enduring the harassment from the in-laws during my pregnancy... I safely gave birth to my daughter, Sophia. But simply because she was a girl, the in-laws showed no affection for Sophia, 
and offered no help with childcare. Shockingly, Carter was exactly the same. Carter, could you change Sophia's diaper? My hands are full. Even such a simple request was met with excuses about getting his hands dirty. Naturally, preparing and cooling milk was also out of the question for him. Forget it, I'll do it myself. Sophia wasn't their child, but she was Carter's. Yet no matter what I asked for, Carter never helped. If he were truly busy, I could have been more understanding. But Carter was just watching TV or fiddling with his phone, doing nothing. It wasn't about a lack of cooperation in childcare anymore. It seemed he simply had no interest in his own child. Feeling such a huge disparity in love for our child between us, I was shocked. As if echoing my feelings, a long period of rain continued. The relentless downpour only worsened my growing despair, leaving me feeling increasingly trapped and miserable. Then, one day during the continuous rain, as usual, I was alone with the child care. Despite having the day off, Carter was still lounging on the sofa, absorbed in his mobile phone. Suddenly, an alarm sounded. The, the dam, dam has broken. broken. Residents of this area, please evacuate immediately. I repeat, evacuate immediately. Holding Sophia, I turned pale upon hearing the alarm. What? What was that? Carter, engrossed in his mobile phone, either hadn't heard or didn't care. With no time to watch TV or notice earlier, it seemed a severe flood warning had been issued for our area that morning. Looking out our window, I saw the river beside our house rising to unprecedented levels, its waters roaring past. Wait, Carter, we need to get ready to evacuate now. What's going on? What happened? Carter asked with a look of annoyance as if his game had been interrupted. Didn't you hear the alarm? The dam has broken. It said we need to evacuate immediately. Catching on to the situation, Carter suddenly stood up and ran off somewhere. Carter! Carter, where are you going? He didn't respond and just disappeared. Sensing the ominous atmosphere, Sophia started crying loudly. Struggling to keep my panic at bay, I hurriedly gathered our essentials. A few minutes later, I stepped out to the entrance holding Sophia. Outside, the rain was torrential, and the wind nearly knocked us over. Looking up, I saw Carter outside, already preparing the car. I felt relieved. I had thought he had fled, leaving us behind. But maybe he still cared for us, and that's why he rushed out. But my relief was short-lived, soon to be shattered. Mom, Dad, hurry and get in the car. The flood will sweep us away. Carter yelled, and the in-laws rushed into the car. Incredibly, Carter was about to drive off without us. Panicking, I screamed at the top of my lungs. Wait, wait! Carter, don't leave us! Quiet, we're leaving now. I didn't have the luxury to feel angry. I was only thinking of Sophia. Please, at least take Sophia with you. Our surroundings were chaos, filled with panicked people. The sound of rain and wind, and Sophia's crying, drowning out my voice. Amidst all this, I couldn't believe what I heard Carter say. His voice carried by the wind. Then for yourself. My parents are obviously more important. I'm taking them to safety. Wait, Carter, please. My desperate pleas were ignored, and Carter drove off. I tried to chase after them, but it was impossible to catch up. Holding Sophia, I stood there dazed. Suddenly, a sense of resignation overtook me. But at the same time, a rage and hatred I had never felt before exploded within me. I curse you. Drenched in the rain, I glared in the direction the car had gone. Screams and alarm sounds were everywhere. The sound of the river, louder than before, filled my ears. The water from the dam would reach us soon. I was ready to give up. I'm sorry, I whispered to Sophia. Just then, Hey, are you okay? I turned to see an elderly man sticking his head out of a light truck. He parked beside me and rushed out of the vehicle, looking frantic. Where's your family? Why are you left here? Never mind. Just get in quickly. Thank you. For every god that forsakes, there's one that saves. Thanks to this man, Sophia and I were miraculously rescued.
After reaching a higher ground, looking down, I saw our house being swallowed by the river. Had we tried to escape on foot? Just thinking about it sent shivers down my spine. Overwhelmed with relief, I just sat down. Afterward, life at the shelter continued for a while. Everyone around was considerate of me with a baby, offering help. I almost forgot about my so-called family, feeling the warmth of strangers' kindness instead. Carter and the in-laws seemed to have gone to a different shelter. Officials checked for me. They should have known we were safe if they had looked, but they never contacted us. A few days later, when the water receded and it was safe, we were allowed to return home temporarily. It seemed Carter and his parents hadn't arrived yet. The first floor of what was once a new house was a tragic mix of water and mud. But luckily, our rooms were on the second floor, so our belongings were dry. I gathered what I needed. While searching for anything else to take, I found the divorce papers. Untouched by the dirt, thanks to the clear file they were in, it was now or never. Returning to live with those people was unthinkable. I decided to return to Boston and raise Sophie on my own. My actions were swift. After settling in the shelter for a while, I returned to Boston and filed the signed divorce papers. My old job took me back, as there happened to be an opening. At that moment, I was truly grateful for my professional qualifications. For a while, I stayed at a friend's house in Boston. A few days later, perhaps feeling something was off due to the lack of contact, Carter finally reached out. Hey, where are you? Come back already. Come back? No way. I'm already in Boston. Carter didn't like my calm response and raised his voice. Hey, I told you you'd be divorced if you did anything on your own. Mom and Dad are furious. Oh, really? Feel free. Did he think threatening divorce would make me submit? I was utterly done with Carter. I replied calmly. You might be using divorce as a threat, but I've already filed the papers. Carter paused for a moment. What? What are you talking about? When I briefly returned home, I found our signed divorce papers and filed them, so you and I are complete strangers now. It seemed to finally sink in for Carter. He was clearly shaken. Don't joke. I don't accept this. I never intended to. You know, as an adult, signing something means you agree to it. It seems your parents wanted it too, so it's good for everyone. I said, almost laughing. That, that was just a threat. A threat? I didn't let that word slip by. Don't be ridiculous. What kind of husband abandons his wife? And a man who would leave his own daughter in danger? is not someone I want. Did you think I was some obedient slave, always following your orders? Don't get ahead of yourself. Carter was clearly startled and flustered by my assertiveness. Hey, calm down, Grace. Let's meet and talk about this. There's nothing left to discuss with you. Prepare yourself. I'll be claiming compensation and child support in full. You and your worthless parents can go to hell together. I said that hung up the phone, and immediately blocked him. The in-laws kept calling persistently, but I ignored every single call. Afterward, I hired a lawyer, skilled in divorce cases, and demanded a lump sum for compensation and child support. Carter ended up paying by taking on debt. Consequently, he couldn't afford the mortgage, and the house had to be sold. However, the flood-damaged house was refused by buyers, and only the land value minus demolition costs was paid which wasn't much. Out of cash, out of kin, as the saying goes, the relationship between Carter, his parents, and him soured, and now they're living separately. Carter is drowning in debt. His parents are living off a meager pension. It's a steep fall from their previous lives. Meanwhile, I returned to my old job while entrusting Sophia to a daycare. Everyone welcomed us warmly and was understanding about childcare. I am endlessly grateful to be working in a place that allows me to work within reasonable limits. Being saved by that stranger and finding the divorce papers in the corner of that muddy room wasn't just chance, it was fate. Since then, I've come to cherish every moment of life. Sometimes I remember the moment I almost gave up and whispered I'm sorry to Sophia. 
Sophia is growing up healthy and strong every day. Every time I see her, I will always protect this child. I renew my vow 